What's up guys? Welcome back to Inside Out Precision. Um, today we're going to be talking about how I and we at the shop here level first, second, and third axes or axes uh, on different sites. So for today's demonstration, I'm gonna be using the black gold mountain light. Um, it has a first, second, and third. Most fixed pin sites, like lower end fixed pin sites, are not going to have any adjustment. The upper end ones, like mid range ones, might have a second axis adjustment. And then the really high end ones, like some of the Excels, uh, a couple of the black golds, they will also have a, they'll have a second and a third. The reason there's no first axis is the first axis is basically the, the rail that the slider moves up and down on on a mover site or like a target site, you know, like a freestyle target site. Um, obviously with a fixed pin, you're not moving the housing at all. You're just moving the pins. Um, but this is really important stuff because if those axes are not set correctly, you're gonna have, you know, an arrow that starts in the middle at 20 and then as you back up to 30, you know, you're a little bit left, 40, you're further left, 50, you're further left. And a lot of people think it's a tune issue and it actually just has to do with their site because if your pins are crooked, you know, as I move up to each pin, I'm moving my site right or left. Um, the first axis on a site like this black gold, and I'll show you all this stuff here in a second in more detail. The first axis on a site like this black gold are going to be like, that's basically when I move my site up and down, if that is not straight, my site's gonna travel from right to left or left to right. So again, that's gonna cause, you know, progressive right misses or progressive left misses the further I get out in range. The third axis, and this is kind of the, you know, the mystical one that nobody really understands and understands how to set, at least in my opinion, correctly. Like we see so many sites where they buy them, they say, oh, they're just set from, you know, from the factory and maybe one out of a hundred that I set up are all the axes is actually level. And it takes hardly anything to throw you off at, you know, 40, 50 yards. Um, but the third axis is at full draw. So imagine if you're looking at the bow from, from the top. So here's, here's the bow, your sight is mounted to it. So this is your sight. My hand here is the sight housing. The third axis is how that sight is flush to your bow at full draw. Now the reason I say at full draw is because when I draw the bow, and the pressure relieves off those strings, there is inherent torque in the riser, or rather, it, it probably more like untorques, but torque is induced one way or another when the pressure is let off of those strings. So I want to set that sight flush to my bow at full draw. So for today's demonstration, I'm gonna be using a draw board. I recommend if you have one at home or you have access to one, I would recommend using it. Now, there's a lot of different tools out there um, to set your third axis without a draw board. Hamski's Gen 2 third axis leveling uh, tool is awesome. I know Brightsight makes a couple where you put your sight in a jig and then you can tilt it up and down. Um, but the reason we do this tilt it up and down is because, so on perfectly flat ground like this, it doesn't matter if that side is cocked in or out, if my bow is, is perfectly vertical. Um, but as soon as I aim uphill, if, I, if that side is cocked one way or the other, you're gonna have a high side and that bubble's gonna travel to that side and then you're gonna false level your bow to get it level and you're gonna shoot out to the right uphill and out to the left downhill. So again, a lot of people think that this comes, you know, they go out to a 3D course and they're like, man, every uphill shot or every downhill shot them to the right or left and they think it's something they're doing or it's something, you know, wrong with the bow and it's not, it's usually in the sight. And if you're gonna buy a, you know, all these sites now, a cheap one is 250 bucks. So if you're gonna buy a $250 site, you may as well get it set correctly. I mean, you know, you're, you're just not utilizing the site to its full potential if you don't get these axes set correctly. So, a couple tools of the trade here. A bow vise is pretty much necessary. So I'm gonna show you the one we have here. Uh, this one is made by OMP. And what's cool about it is, you know, locks in that limb really securely. And then these knobs here, I can turn them and it will actually just micro that bow, you know, this way and then forward and backward. Um, now, if you don't have a vise, this is, this is gonna be tough, whether you have a draw board or not. So a vise is a must. Um, obviously every pro shop is gonna have one, but you know, if you're setting up your home 
shop, like in your garage, a bow vise is probably like the second most important piece of equipment you're gonna have. Um, so the other thing we're gonna use in the beginning is a string level because we need to make sure that not only is that bow level this way, but also that it's not facing forward or backward. And the reason for that is because the levels on like the third axis is most likely not in play here. So if I tilt my bow forward, that bubble's gonna shift right or left. And then I'm gonna be false leveling my, my second axis. So a string level, you can see here, this one's made by Van Handel Archery. There's a bunch of these out there. Brightsight makes a great one. Uh, the hamski, you can do it all with one hamski. Um, but when I clip this on the string, so if you imagine my fingers the string, that clips on there. This bubble is gonna tell me if my bow is tipping forward or backward. And then this one is going to tell me the, the vertical bias of my bow this way. Maybe I have that backwards. I can never remember what's horizontal and what's vertical bias. But either way, I want both these bubbles to be right in the middle. And I should go ahead and say that you want to do this after your, uh, your bow has been tuned. Um, because you know I'm essentially leveling my string here because that's what the arrow is connected to, um, to, to my sight. So we're leveling the bow, the string, and everything to the sight. So this clips on the string right here. I will show you that in a second. And then we use, this is not the newest Hamski. We've had this one forever. Um, but you can actually clip this onto your string. There's a little groove right in here. You might be able to see it. And then this tightens down. So you could clip this onto your string to get your, you know, forward and backward. I wish I knew the terms better. It's bad that I don't. Um, but you can clip that on there. Um, I basically use this for getting the first axis level and then we're gonna attach this to the riser of the bow when we do the third axis. Um, so I'm going to kind of reposition the camera here so that we can, uh, I can, you'll kind of get a, a good view of what I'm doing here. Um, but before I do that, I want to mention the uh, our merchandise store. So insideoutprecision.com. If you head over there, we got all sorts of cool hats. This is the leather patch one. Um, we got a bunch of different t-shirts, hoodies, beanies, pretty much anything you can think of. So if you want to support the channel, get some cool swag, head on over to insideoutprecision.com. Link is at the bottom of the screen as we speak. So after that shameless little plug, I'm going to reposition this camera and I'm going to show you what we're doing here. Okay, so now, so this is the string level that I was talking about earlier, and you can see that my bubble here, my bow is level left to right, and it's kind of hard to see because I keep bumping the string with my mic, but this bubble is also right in the middle, so my bow is not tilting forward or backwards. So now we know that the bow is level. So for this next portion, I'm going to attach my hamski to the rail, of the site here. Now, on this black gold site, this has an adjustable first axis. So this, you're gonna wanna run this bar all the way up, at least for this hamski to get on there. And then you're going to attach this to the bar. Now, if I come around the back here, we can pretty clearly see that that it's close, but it is not level. So we need to fix that. In order to do that, we're going to use these two little screws here. So I can loosen those, and then that bar can pitch right or left until I get that leveled. So I'm gonna get that leveled real quick and then show you what it looks like. Okay, so that took all of about five seconds, 10 seconds, but now you can see that this is perfectly level. So now that is matching the string level that I just put on earlier. So now I know that my first axis is running perfectly level with the string and the riser of the bow. So now that we have the first axis set, let's take a look at the second. So on this, so you can see this ring here, the level is attached to it. You can see that bubble is not in the middle. So on this site, to move that, we just loosen these two little set screws here and then literally just rotate the ring a little bit. And that's not gonna take hardly anything at all. So again, I'm gonna set that and then I'm gonna show you what it's gonna look like and how everything is matching. Okay, so now you can see my second, my first are both matching 
and the string level here if I can get to focus on that string level is also right in the middle so now we have all three of those matching okay now the next step to this is I'm gonna take off my ham ski here I'm gonna mount it to the riser of the bow so try to bring this where you can see it now there are some bows that this is really tricky to find a good flat spot on um, the carbon bows are really really tough you kind of have to go up here by the limb pocket Matthews are really easy I usually like to try to get it as close to the grip as possible uh, because you know that's that's where the, the torque is going to be induced um, so for this you know I'm going to come right on the riser here open this up a little bit and oh that work right there yeah, so see, like, even this Hoyt's kind of tricky. We're going to go down here below the grip. This can be hard because not... Lots of risers now have curves in them, so you got to find that flat spot. Usually this is a lot easier, but this rest is making my life difficult right now. Um, right here should work. okay there we go so now i have that rest or excuse me that ham ski mounted there that is level my if i get it to focus second axis is still level and my string is still level so now oh zoomed in there <laughs> Sorry, this is really hard with one person. So now we're gonna take this over to the draw board. Um, we're gonna put the bow in the draw board, draw the bow back, and then we're gonna match the third axis to this level. So we're gonna remove the string level for this. We do not need this anymore. Um, I'm gonna get this positioned over there. I'm gonna do my best to, to show you. It's gonna be hard to hold the bow and show you, um, but I'm gonna do my best and we'll, uh, we'll get this thing leveled up. Okay, so I have my bow in the Hooter Shooter right now. Um, what's great about the Hooter Shooter, well, you can do a lot of things with the Hooter Shooter, but um, we pretty much only use it to check third axis. Uh, but what's cool about this is I can get the bow to full draw, lock it in position there, um, and then I can take that wing nut out and actually tip the whole thing up, up and down. Um, and we're going, to, we're going to tip it up, just set that on the floor and the bow will be facing up. Uh, and then we're going to match the level on the site to the level that we put on the bow earlier. That's gonna be a little tricky to show. Um, gonna might be a little shaky with the camera, um, but we are going to get that set. So we're gonna get this thing back, full draw. Right there. So see now we're, we're tilting it. And now I'm ready to check the levels. So let me get this camera repositioned and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so we've got the bow tilted up vertically here. Um, so we can see our level there. So we're gonna tilt this bow to so see I can move this, tilt it right and left. We're gonna tilt that bow until that bubble comes right into the middle. So now we know that the bow is vertical. Now let's look at this site. Yes, see we're not even close. So what would happen when I'm shooting is even though my bow is level right now, I would tilt my bow, I would camp my bow falsely until that bubble came in to the center and then I'd shoot out to the left facing uphill. So see when, like if you don't set your third axis, you think you're level right there, but look at that bubble's completely pegged on the left side there. So the bow and the string and the arrow are not actually level to the axis that you're shooting on. So what we need to do is match that bubble when it's level to this bubble, or rather this bubble to that bubble when it's level. Now every site is gonna have 
some method of doing this if it has a third axis adjustment. For black gold, uh, they've got this little set screw right under here that you loosen. And then on the side of the sight, this screw, if I turn it right or left, that's going to hinge that sight one way or the other. So we're gonna do that real quick. Don't fall, please don't fall. <laughs> okay, so you just need an Allen wrench for this. We're gonna loosen that little set screw. And we're gonna take this. Now I should mention, every sight, some bubbles, like the fluid in them, move really, really quickly. Others move really slowly. Um, if it's a slower moving bubble, like once you get it to the middle, wait a second because it might actually go past where you thought it would. So you wanna hold it there for you know five or 10 seconds and make sure it stays in the middle. Um, so I'm gonna get this level. Start turning that. Black golds have pretty quick moving fluid. A little bit more. A little bit more. Too much. It's crazy how little movement it takes in that screw. Okay. So right there. Both are matching, so I'll show you here what I'm talking about. Okay, so. So now, when I level this, so level there, and level there. So see, they're matching. So now, when I level my sight, my bow is actually level and my arrow should hit behind the pin, <laughs> should, if I do everything I'm supposed to. So um, the last step here is you just wanna lock down that little set screw so that doesn't move anymore. Um, I know this is kind of an involved process. Like I said, if you don't have a drawboard, uh, Hamski, their Gen 2 third axis leveling whatever tool um, works pretty dang well. Um, you don't have to put the bow at full draw. Um, they have a method of doing it, but I like to do it at full draw. So any sort of draw board is really helpful. Um, not every sight, some sites are easier than others to, to do. I think black gold is fairly easy. Spot hog is pretty easy. Spot hog doesn't have a true first axis, which has always kind of bugged me. They've only got a second and a third, but they do seem to machine all their rails you know, generally when we get the second and third set, I've never seen really an issue. Um, so they seem to machine all their stuff really, really square, which is good. Um, it should say, if you're when you're buying a site, it should say if it has a, a second or third axis adjustment. If it doesn't say anything, it probably doesn't have any adjustment whatsoever. So just keep that in mind when you're buying a site. Um, but like I said earlier, you know, if you're gonna spend two, three, four, five hundred dollars on some of these sites, why would you not take the time to do this and make sure you get the most out of it. So if you have any questions on this, honestly, <laughs> I mean, go ahead and ask them. It's pretty hard to explain over text. Um, it's a lot easier if you give us a call here at the shop. Um, if you don't know, I work at the Bow Rack in Springfield, Oregon, so you can just Google it and give us a call. Um, but best to take it down to a pro shop or, you know, there's a lot of guys that know what they're doing that work out of their garage. Um, so if you go to a local league, like let's say you're not happy with your pro shop, but you go to a league and you see a really good shooter and his equipment seems to be dialed, you know, ask him where he goes or if he works on his own stuff and if you can pay him to work on your stuff. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching today. Remember to head on over to insideoutprecision.com, cop yourself some merch. Uh, and remember, as always, precision is a decision. Keep them in the middle, and I'll see you on the range.